Hello and welcome to my talk. Sorry for the delay, but I had uh, unex unexpected uh, Windows 10 update problems. <laughs> so, uh, who am I? Uh, I'm a C++ pro programmer. I start, start, started with networking protocols, client server. Then I switched to Qt, uh, did a little bit of UI. Uh, my platforms are Linux, Windows, Windows and Embedded. I'm a freelancer. I'm concerned about performance. I even wrote a book about Qt5 and performance. Why this talk? I Well, I was listening to C++ Weekly and there were some advanced PMR techniques uh, discussed and I didn't totally didn't get it. So I started looking it, into it. So uh, I found a couple of things which are interesting. So uh, this talk isn't an expert's talk. I am just interested in, in that matter. It's not a tutorial on allocators and allocators over classes. Other have done this already, possibly much better than I could. And it's not live performance comp comparison session on, on QuickBench or something. Uh, it would be another talk maybe later. So uh, overview. We'll start with discussion of memory allocators and, and uh, the inter in implications for performance. Then uh, we have uh, planned uh, an overview of, of several of uh, uh, several standards and how um, allocators were treated there. Uh, at last, we will arrive at PMRs, a topic of our talk. Uh, give some usage examples, some advanced techniques, and have a little bit of, a, of an outlook into the future. Uh, how memory and performance, how they impact each other? Well, uh, the first lesson I learned in performance was allocating memory is bad. Don't use new, it's much too expensive. Allocating on heap is a no-no. Then uh, we learned, uh, we learned we all learned, learned uh, that uh, modern com uh, processors heavily rely on cache hierarchies uh, to, to um, optimize uh, memory uh, uh, speed. And then the, uh, the notions like cache invalidations, uh, locality of uh, memory accesses came in. Uh, well, uh, I, I suppose you, all know about it, so I won't uh, explain that in, in detail. Uh, memory comes to us programmers through system memory allocators like TC malloc, GA malloc, uh, and others. So uh, there is a long standing tradition in writing custom allocator, allocators. Why is that? Are these global memory allocators not good enough? Oh. Well, why custom memory allocators? Yes, for performance, because we can do things when global memory allocators can't, like uh, allocate related objects in contiguous memory for locality, locality of, uh, of memory accesses. Then we could avoid locks when we know that uh, we are uh, using this allocator in, in a single thread only then we can better fight fragmentation and diffusion of memory because uh, we have uh, uh, additional information at, at our disposal with, which global uh, allocators can't have. And then we can lower cost of allocations uh, if we have special requirements. Second goal uh, could be special placement of, our, of, of objects. We would like for uh, maybe we would like to place it in shared memory, file map memory, on even a pro program stack, because why not? And uh, the last reason, well, for debugging, uh, maybe uh, you'd like to print some print out some debug info when allocating uh, things like that. I've done it. So. Uh, what is the traditional allocator wisdom that came down to me before I started to, to dig uh, into allocators? Uh, uh, STL allocators. Um, well, I ha I've heard of, of sized block allocators, which are good for 
uh, for example, for, for net, uh, generating network pack packets because they, are, they have all the same length. Then I knew C++ allows uh, overloading of global uh, and local class local new operators. And I've heard of STL allocator, but I didn't, didn't use it much, or frankly, not at all, because it wasn't that interesting. Uh, in game programming, custom allocators are widely used because uh, game programmers can uh, use every, <laughs> will use every every bit of performance they can get. And uh, if you look in, 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 in the classic book, Game Engine Architecture, uh, you will see that uh, some of the special allocators were always uh, always in use in in game programming, like stacked allocators, where memory will be allocated in a stack, and then uh, uh, in a stack-like manner, uh, new slabs of memory will be stacked uh, one upon upon. Uh, other and then uh, the object can't be freed in arbitra arbitrary order. You you have to go down the stack when uh, when uh, they are locating. Then pool allocators for particles, projectiles, spaceships in 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 a shooting game. It it would be nice to have something uh, uh, where you uh, have have uh, provided for and and can reuse this object. Then aligned allocators, where uh, sometimes we uh, would like to have uh, our memory specially aligned for, for hardware uh, operations. And single frame allocators. This is a particularly uh, interesting uh, technique. Uh, these are allocators we, uh, that uh, keep memory, which is used uh, for only for, for the uh, dur uh, duration of uh, uh, sorry, uh, of the, for the duration of uh, render ren uh, of a single uh, frame rendering, and then uh, it will be uh, released and reused uh, when uh, next frame is rendered, and this can be conveniently. Uh, implemented using this stacked allocator we explained uh, just before uh, before a moment then i have seen that there are uses for serial, uh, allocators uh, in serialization for example uh, protocol buffers use uh, their custom uh, allocator arena allocator class we will, we will talk of it, uh, about arenas later and the last, uh, the last uh, point I would like to to bring on is uh, uh, an article about XML parsing implemented internally with lists uh, to represent uh, the DOM, and we all know lists aren't very good as uh, as data structures uh, performance wise because uh, of their non locality uh, pointer chasing etc but they save the day using a special uh, stacked allocator they wrote so the performance wa was very good not only accept acceptable so uh, this last example illustrate that there is a conflict in developer mind mind uh, normally, when uh, faced with uh, a performance problem, we uh, first think about new data structures, which are better suited to it. But we could also just uh, replace the allocator to, uh, uh, to achieve better memory locality in our data structure. So uh, this was also, also uh, the case with me because I always just changed the data structure and never, never thought, uh, really thought about uh, exchanging uh, writing allocators. But PMRs are going to change it as we will see uh, 
in the next uh, slides. Okay, uh, now we, we we all knew how uh, C++ new operators could be overloaded globally or for a class. Then we have our STL allocators. They will be uh, passed to uh, a vector as a template par parameter. The question is, where did they come from and how they evolved? Uh, we, will, we, uh, uh, we will look into this uh, uh, in this talk. So they started uh, uh, with the... Uh, 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 they started uh, as a means to encapsulate different sized pointers on PCs at the time. There were near far huge pointer in segmented memory models. Okay, then, uh, uh, but then they they evolved into an abstract memory allocation service for containers because containers uh, not only uh, uh, must allocate and deallocate deallocate memory, uh, and then. Uh, construct and destroy objects in that allocated memory. So new and delete operator, operators aren't enough and allocators uh, implement this logic for all, uh, for, for, uh, for all containers to reuse. So I'm uh, an, an, uh, C++ 98 allocator would look uh, rather complicated. You see, we have a lot of type devs. We have this this uh, mysterious rebind mechanism, uh, but uh, uh, we have only four uh, member functions for allocate and deallocate of memory regions, and then to construct and destroy objects in these regions. And uh, additionally, we have comparison operators which we will be talking about later uh, because they are uh, playing a pretty pretty important part in the design. So what problems uh, did we have with that design? First, the problem is that uh, uh, allocator forms a part of vectors of containers type. So if you have a function taking, taking a vector, uh, and we have a, a vector with uh, which is using a custom allocator. This function can't can't won't be able to accept this uh, our our custom allocator vector. So we uh, thus uh, uh, this means we should uh, <laughs> template it all the functions which are using. Uh, standard library uh, containers, but no, no one would would like to do it. No, 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 no. So this is a okay. This is somehow a major problem. The second problem. Uh, now we come back to our uh, comparison uh, operators. All insta allocator instances are always compare equal. This means they are interchangeable. This means the instances can free each other's memory, okay? And additionally, pointer type def is, uh, isn't allowed to be to denote a fancy pointer. It should be uh, always defined as, as a native pointer. What's that? The, uh, parts of the design are just, just deactivated because of this uh, annotation here in the standard. Which, uh, and um, I think, I mean that these annotations were included into the standard because uh, there was no time to, uh, to design uh, these features co correctly and they didn't want to delay the release of the standard. So, uh, okay, we don't have time for more discussion of this. Allocated problem three. Uh, the, the design where, is it, well, where it is complete is also inconsistent because uh, uh, under specific uh, circumstances, we, we uh, cannot say uh, 
which allocator uh, will be used to uh, in which element of uh, of the um, container so it's so we have no real real control over memory it's more kind of mass than than uh, a good designed feature so our wish is for more same uh, allocator model uh, allocators uses you used to construct container should be used to construct elements logical stateful allocator fancy pointer we would like it uh, and objects type shouldn't be dependent on uh, on the allocator because okay it's only implementation detail uh, we don't ask the compiler uh, or, uh, the type of of uh, an object doesn't depend on on location uh, of this object in memory so a long long time ago there was a company com called bloomberg and they had uh, uh, their own uh, allocator library which unfortunately wasn't compatible with the uh, stl allocator design so they had to had to match but both worlds as not to get rid of the of, of their uh, nice performance gains so the the idea was to wrap the base class for allocators they use it in an sdl conformant allocator template wrapper and then always use these allocators in the signatures of the sdl containers and secondly uh, they added allocators per, uh, parameter in constru constructor uh, in constructors of containers so that uh, the containers could pass the uh, allocators uh, down to the elements to create the elements so then uh, in 2011 uh, the new standard standard com came out and uh, and uh, we've got some re rework for allocators uh, stateful allocators were supported sub, uh, fancy pointers were also su supported uh, Allocate writing allocator were, uh, was simplified uh, because some requirements uh, uh, were made optional and uh, for these optional uh, requirements there were default implementations provided uh, so now an allocator uh, allocator implementation was rather simple we need one type def value type we need to uh, allocate and deallocate uh, methods and then we need these operators that that will say of of these uh, allocators are interchangeable so the uh, the default uh, um, definitions for for other traits which aren't uh, for other type devs and and methods with which aren't uh, required uh, by the C++ 11 standard will be pro are provided by allocator traits class. Okay. But what about our Bloomberg design? Uh, how, how? What parts of it were were integrated? Well, uh, scoped allocator support was integrated. Uh, this means allocator propagation from propagation from uh, container to the elements. Uh, was supported and with uh, this complicated a little bit uh, the interface of, of allocators because uh, we can uh, there are new uh, traits uh, for propagation of, of container of, of allocators on copy construction copy move assignment etc etc this but with C++ 11, we were able to, for example, to write this uh, uh, allocator with, which will be used memory just on the stack. So, okay, it was uh, a progress. So, but allocators were still parts of the signature 
remember it, it was a pine in the ass. So uh, in C++ 17, parts of the Bloomberg design uh, were, uh, the rest of Bloomberg design was integrated. Uh, remember, uh, we wanted to wrap the base class for allocators in, in a, a template and then uh, use the wrapper in STL containers. So we will just take this design and remove the, the, the type dependencies in allocator, uh, on allocators and containers. How can we do that? Here uh, on, we have, we, we see a table uh, of uh, name mappings between Bloomberg and C++ classes. The first class uh, on the left, the SLMA allocator, was renamed uh, into PMM memory resource. This was this, uh, the um, um, uh, this was the uh, polymorphic uh, abstract superclass for all uh, specific allocators. Now it is, uh, it is called memory resource. Well, for me, it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> uh, so, and then we had, uh, two lines down, uh, BSL allocator template, which was a rep, SL conformant wrapper for, for this BSL allocator object, a pointer. And it was uh, uh, renamed to polymorphic allocator. So, okay. How does this help us? Okay. When we have, we now ha when we have now a container, it will be always configured, uh, parameterized with this uh, standard PMI polymorphic allocator template, which internally will uh, will uh, have a pointer on a, a base class of PMI memory resource abstract base class, and uh, the specific memory resources implementation. Uh, which are allocators, allocating memory, but it's all confusing. <laughs> so uh, we will call them mm, memory resources from now on to be conformant to, uh, to standard nomenclature. These uh, memory resources will, will then uh, implement specific uh, algorithms. So how can we use it? Simple, uh, simply use, we have some buffer somewhere in program, then we, we uh, allocate, uh, construct a, a memory, PMR memory, memory resource, giving this buffer as, uh, to, be, uh, to be managed by this memory uh, resource. And then, uh, and then uh, to plug in this memory resource to allocate our data in a vector, we have to use standard PMR vector uh, class, which uses this, this wrapper, this STD PMI polymorphic allocator wrapper uh, uh, in this type, uh, in, in its type. And uh, also uh, forward the address of, of these memory resources to the uh, vector to the uh, vector instance. Uh, uh, notice that vector is a PMR overload of the, of the standard vector, but string not isn't. So uh, vector elements. Uh, this means strings will be allocated with this uh, memory uh, resource, but string internal, uh, internal allocations will be done, uh, still done doing uh, new and delete. If we don't want this, we, ha we have to use uh, STD PMR string overload here as well. Okay, let's let us have some uh, uh, overview of our PMR and, and its usage. 
The types, we don't have that many types for, for, for resources. The first, we have monotonic buffer resource and, and pool resource, synchronized and not synchronized. So let us start with monotonic buffer resource. It's, uh, um, it's a memory resource which will uh, allocate memory and never free it before it is destroyed. Only in the structure, uh, the uh, memory will be uh, ag released again. So it's like stacked allocator. It can uh, emulate, a, em emulate an on stack allocator and it's uh, very similar to the single frame al allocator usage. Uh, monotonic means growing, always growing. So it's best suited for uh, data, for data structures where the elements are rarely deleted. Uh, a second, second uh, uh, resource we have uh, in standard is uh, a pool resource. It is optimized for blocks of single size. Uh, this means, uh, but it holds a collection of pools of of blocks of different size. So we'll discuss this later. And it's good, uh, better for data or good for data uh, structures with where numerous insertion deletions uh, are, are expected because of good locality in, in these pools, inside of these pools. Okay, we have also a class to parameterize the pool resource. So how, how can you use uh, the uh, uh, monitoring buffer resource? Okay. Here we see that we have a vector which has uh, a string. Both of them uh, are these PMR overloads. And uh, we give uh, them an, a memory resource to allocate memory. And then we have a totally different vector uh, where we can also give this buffer resource and then we'll share it. It's no problem. Uh, one, pr one thing you have to keep in mind when using a monotonic buffer, buffer resource in loops is that because monotonic buffer monotonic is monotonically growing, we don't uh, have to uh, go out, out of bounds and for that, we have a release method. This method would rewind uh, the uh, allocator to the beginning. This means it, it will bump down its internal pointer to point to the be beginning of, of the data, but uh, it will uh, then reuse all the allocated data in the next one. So now to pool resource, how does, does this pool resource look like? Okay, we have, in pool we have several, uh, the sizes. Each size has a collection of chunks, and inside of these chunks, uh, the objects will be uh, allocated uh, uh, next uh, next to each other in a in contiguous contiguous memory. Uh, well, this required poolable uh, table size and parameter and blocks per chunk parameter are uh, can be set by uh, uh, via pool up options class. So in these chunks, inside of these chunks, we, we can uh, count of pretty good locality. So uh, it would be a preferable uh, uh, memory resource for example, for uh, well, we have numerous insertions, deletions, or in, in deep recursive recursive call sequences, because they will keep the ca cache pretty hot. Upstream allocators, well, uh, upstream, it, it, it should uh, tell upstream memory resources. Okay, we can see it here. If uh, the allocator uh, is finished, it doesn't have any more uh, exhausted its own memory, he can get new memory, memory from its upstream allocator and default, up, default upstream, upstream allocator is 
of course, new delete allocator. Yeah. Uh, then we we can set the default allocator. Uh, uh, this means also the default upstream allocator. As I said, uh, norm, uh, initially the default uh, default allocator default <laughs> memory resource. You know, it's confusing. Uh, the default uh, memory resource is, of course, new delete resource. And just for fun, uh, standard also defines a null memory resource, which doesn't do any allocations at all. Well, fun. Advanced techniques. OK. So the first one is winking out. Uh, you must know that the deallocate method in, in mono, monot monotonic buffer resource is a no operation. This means the structures of the elements are not called. called and uh, even the internal pointer of to the buffer isn't moved. It's just no, no operation. So, but when we uh, use monotonic buffer in in a container, still the destructor of the container contain, uh, with this allocator has to be called. So, well, not so happy, not so happy face. But we can uh, use a trick: use the same monotonic buffer we have for for the elements for the container itself. Of course, there is a word of caution because the monotonic bu buffer resource uh, uh, deallocate doesn't call a container, uh, the constructor. Uh, side effects are not allowed in constructors, or we are uh, we have to brace our, ourselves for problems. So, wink in example. Uh, we have some uh, pool resource, unsynchronized pool resource, and then we uh, allocate here a new pool of uh, data structure using this pool resource. This is some complicated data structure, vector of lists of strings, uh, and it it will get us as uh, uh, constructor uh, parameter uh, our pool resource also so it pool resource this pool resource will be used for the container and for container elements so then at uh, when uh, this uh, when our pool resource get out of scope the data uh, will be just winked out <laughs> like that because no contain uh, for contained object uh, objects no uh, the allocators will be called and for the from the container uh, no the allocator will be called also i have to quote <laughs> i have just to qu quote uh, 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 a speaker from another presentation, you just destroy an arena and everything winks out. So, uh, again, this arena uh, concept, uh, you must know this, that arena, arena is something uh, which, well, new objects are allocated out of a large piece of pre-allocated memory. And this piece of pre-allocated memory is called the arena. So it's pretty uh, similar to our monotonic buffer uh, resource. And uh, for it, it was used uh, in Google protocol uh, buffers. We mentioned it already. And uh, uh, Objects can be freed at once by discarding the entire arena, and then uh, ideally, we, ideally without running the structure, the structures, but uh, they can be also enabled. So this makes the deallocation de almost free. <laughs> so this is wink out, also sometimes also called arena uh, allocation. So, uh, second problem, localized garbage collection. Uh, 
large graphs created with shared pointers have been known to overflow this call stack, the call stack on destruction, because each node's constructor, the destructor, sorry, recursively calls the destructor for the next node in the graph. And then you have unbounded recursion and unbounded stack, de stack depth. Hapsutter uh, proposed in a, in a talk on CppCon uh, a language extension for that, but do we need it? Could we do without it? Maybe. So the idea is just to use the previous wink, wink out technique, to, uh, but now not to uh, uh, speed up the destructor, uh, but to uh, avo avoid uh, stack overflow. Here is our example. We have graph, graph nodes and uh, it has payload and out outgoing edges. And we just uh, allocate graph nodes using our memory buffer. Uh, here it is monitoring buffer resource, our memory resource. And we are just using naked pointers. So, and note that no graph node object is ever individually destroyed or deallocated. Instead, the entire graph uh, is deallocated when the allocator gets out of scope. And it's, it's uh, much simpler than using reference counted pointers uh, where the cycles are <laughs> a big problem. And also, uh, we, you, you can see this, this here. We we build uh, we constructed a cycle here, and it's no problem because we don't follow pointers. We just uh, deallocate all the memory resource. So uh, that's one of uh, that's uh, a solution to that problem using polymorphic memory allocators. Of course, some caveat some caveats that we, as with wink outs uh, apply. So no uh, side effects in destructors. Do we have time for it? I think so. Uh, was the statelet design of C++ uh, 98 all bad? Not really, because uh, allocators, were, allocators were supposed to be stateless. They could be. So they could be optimized away by empty base class class optim optimization, memory size gains. Uh, now uh, compilers can't uh, can't uh, uh, assume anymore that 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 uh, allocators are stateless. But in library we can detect if allocator is stateless with some. Uh, uh, trade and uh, then emulate this uh, empty base optimization. Uh, you can see here in, in this uh, uh, GCC standard library code how this can could be done. Speci specialization using uh, ABO it doesn't hold this uh, object of type TP underscore TP uh, as as uh, as uh, member, it's it just uh, inherits from it, so it could be uh, optimized away. And the second specialization just uh, defines a um, an, an member of of type TP, and we must here uh, uh, um, distinguish these two uh, implementation by this true false parameter. So, like, let us uh, have a quick look in the in C plus plus in the future. In C plus plus, we have uh, some uh, we've, we've got some changes in polymorphic allocator definition for to support this new byte uh, uh, type we had, and also uh, to directly. Uh, 
create an, and delete new object in polymorphic allocator. The old allocator class was also changed. Uh, the uh, a couple of uh, of uh, type devs and and functions which are optionally optional and can be. Uh, uh, which are optional uh, was uh, removed because they can uh, be uh, implemented by these uh, allocator traits. Then a couple of, of uh, allocator uh, related classes, uh, uh, functions <laughs> and template functions, uh, which uh, mainly uh, create new objects out of allocator with some with some uh, argument list were added. So the addi additions weren't so many. But what does the future keep in store for, for us? For C++ 23, there was announcement of a, a test resource proposal, uh, which were uh, previously used previously used at Bloomberg's. So how could uh, such a test uh, locator help, help us uh, for in performance optim optimization? Well, uh, look at this. First, we have a mon monotonic uh, buffer allocator, which uh, will get uh, all its uh, memory uh, from the new uh, from the new operator and then we want to uh, we can replace it with the counting allocator which will count for us the maximal uh, count the allocations are, are to tell us how uh, what the maximum size of of this structure was and then we can replace it replace it with a uh, allocator using using a fixed memory resource uh, so no uh, uh, no uh, new calls at all and welcome performance gains. So uh, test uh, resource proposal in, uh, in details look like that. Uh, default resource guard uh, his hel can, uh, helps us uh, install and then deinstall uh, uh, default memory resource can be used in unit tests to, to check uh, uh, the correct memory usage, then the test loop to tests to uh, help, uh, will help us to uh, test uh, low memory conditions. And the star of the uh, proposal is, of course, the test resource itself. It can detect leaks, double freeze, buffer overruns, buffer underruns. Uh, can be used to uh, fail to alloc alloc uh, to um, simulate allocation failures and can provide statistics on allocations. So, is there something more? Well, some people still think, still mean uh, this all allocator business is much too complicated, and I think there is. Uh, uh, language propo proposal coming for C++ 23 to uh, uh, to add allocator support in in the language and uh, uh, we and don't harass the, <laughs> the, prog the programmers with it so we in the future we would uh, just uh, write down our container and then said uh, say type using and uh, give the allocator uh, we wrote to be used with this container and this will be that this this will be all in conclusion writing custom allocators and that data stru structures is too complicated but every developer can just use PMRs and, st uh, and standard uh, libraries containers and what we learned, it's not only about performance, but also about placing objects on the stack, measuring and reporting memory usage, testing correctness of memory accesses, and implementing efficient garbage collection, for example, in graph structures. 
Thank you. That's all. Any questions? Question slide th uh, 36. 36. Okay. So, wing out example. Is wing out for objects in non trivial destructors permitted? For those that know what they are doing, or is it consider considered uh, undefined behavior? Well, frankly, I, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, good question. It shouldn't be, but you never know. Uh, we just uh, we just uh, change some some pointers to internal data structures and uh, don't do anything. The the objects uh, we allocated still live in, in that uh, uh, locations. Hmm. But then if they are reallocated, well, <laughs> don't know, probably undefined behavior. Uh, but I'm not sure. We have to ask some committee member. More questions? Thank you.